Yo, what's poppin' fellas? It's your boy Tacho here. And we're back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. Okay, this one is pretty insane. We just got the data mine for the brand new update that we got. And there is a lot to talk about here. We have the new Divine Codes, or the new combat manuals for the new Divine Codes. We have also the stats for the brand new units. We have the refines for the old units. We got info on the new Grand Hero Battle. And we also have info for the brand new OC that we saw in the trailer. So we're going to go ahead and cover all of this stuff. And bear with me guys because we have a lot to talk about. But I'm going to try my best here. So let's actually start things off with the new manuals. These are insane dude. Like look at these units. And over here too it's like it's just a clinic. <laughs> the the code shop is like stacked beyond belief here. I can't believe they did this. So on the first path we have the Summer Sylvain. We've got Annette. Annette's really good. She has Rally Attack and Speed Plus and Defense and Res Ruse. We've got the Summer Ingrid who's got Guard Bearing and Sturdy Impact. We've got this Bernie who has Attack and Speed Push 4 and Lull Speed and Defense. And then we have this male Byleth with Disencounter and Ruptured Sky. So a really good way to start us off. Then we have this Fortune Bow Anna. I believe she also has Sabotage Attack. Then we have Bride Fiorm, of course, with Dazzling Staff and Ground Orders. We've got the Fallen Corin M. And this guy's got Null Follow-Up as well as Attack and Speed Solo 4. We have Seiri with Kestrel Stance 3 and also Close Call 3. And then we have Midori with Spendthrift Bow, Close Foil, and also Rally, Attack, and Defense Plus. So another insane line right there. Over here, we've got the Halloween Ilyana. She has Spooky Sensor and Bold Fighter. We've got King Kanigus with DD4 and Distant Guard 3 as well as Vengeful Fighter. We have the Bride Nyla with Swift Sparrow 3 and... I believe she has Glare, but I don't think Glare is inheritable, so I guess that's kind of a moot point. Then we have the Gatry over here with Fortress Defense and Res 3, Crafty Fighter, and Spirited Spear. And then finally, we have the King of Fodder himself. <laughs> we got Shinnin up top. And as you can see, he is stacked like to the max. We got Deadeye, we got Times Pulse, Attack and Defense Solo 4, and Lull Attack and Speed. So just a massive win for all the players with these manuals. Then we go over here and we've got the Bunny Narshin with the... What lance did he have? What was it called? Um, oh man, I think it was called Guilt Fork. It basically is just Carrot Cudgel except the lance. Then we have Coral Bow Joshua who also has a sabotage skill if I'm not mistaken. Forgive me if I can't remember like all the skills off top, but... Some of these like really random seasonals I'm not going to be able to remember. Then we have Nils with Infantry Pulse and also I believe he has Even Pulse Tie. Then we have the Fallen Leon with Null Sea Disrupt as well as Bonus Doubler. And then we've got Guinevere with Lull Attack and Res. She also has Attack and Res Push 4 and also Joint Drive Res. So <laughs> another really crazy line there. We got Ballroom Ethlin down here with Air Orders. Honestly, Air Orders isn't really that crazy anymore after they made it a seal. But I guess it's still nice to get it on certain units for the C slot. Then we've got Ocean over here with Wrath and Mirror Stance 3. We've got this Fallen Marita with Null Follow Up and Flashing Blade 4. We've got the Masquerade Ethlin. This one is crazy because she's got ARD Attack and Speed 3. She's got Joint Drive Speed and Wind Sweep. <laughs> so, one of the craziest manuals in here. And then we've got Pirate Bridget, who has the Helm Bow. She also has Steady Impact, I think it's called. The one that gives you speed and defense and stops their follow-up. And she also has Pulse Smoke as well. <laughs> so, yo, these manuals, man, this is crazy. Okay, and last but not least, we've got the Valentine Conrad. So, this guy has a pretty good weapon, actually. He's got Melee Bouquet, which is Sturdy Impact built into a sword. We have the Fallen Burkut with Warding Stance 4. We have the Valentian Catria, and she's got Aerobatics and Attack and Speed Bond 4. Then we have the Bunny Est with Fury 4 and... 
I'm pretty sure she has a double chill skill, but I can't remember which one. It might be chill attack and res or chill speed and res, but like I said, I don't remember exactly. And then last but not least, we got the male Chris. This guy's got joint drive attack and spurn three, so he's really good as well. Like, dude, <laughs> Insys really did a fantastic job with these manuals because I cannot tell you how excited I am to start getting these brand new divine codes. So that's going to be really good. All right, next up we have the refines for the new units. And actually, <laughs> the night has been pretty long. We've had so much info to talk about that I haven't actually looked at all the refines yet, but only a couple of them. So some of these are going to be blind, but I have seen this one. So we have Evaldi's Refine, grants a flat defense up 3. And then at the start of combat, if foe's HP is above or equal to 75%, grants attack, speed, and res up 3 to Larichelle. And then also at the start of combat, if the foe's HP is above or equal to 75%, inflicts attack and res minus 5 on that foe during combat, and recovers 7 HP to Larichelle after combat. So it's not like a crazy refine, but it's definitely a much needed update to this unit. She has been summonable in the 4 star and 3 star pool for a while now. So it's nice to get an update for a pretty easy to get merge project there. I just wish it was as nuts as Gleipner's was. Well, I guess the HP requirement here is a little bit better. I think Gleipner needs the foe to be on full HP. So this might be a little more consistent. <laughs> but then Gleipner also nullifies penalties. So it would have been nice if she got something like that. But I guess the recovery is nice. Okay, next up we have Ira. I haven't even looked at Ira's yet. <laughs> so accelerate special trigger. Grants attack and speed up three. And then during combat neutralizes effects that grant special cooldown charge plus X to foe. Or inflicts special cooldown charge minus X to unit. Oh, so it's Creator Sword, basically. Okay, and then the additional effect is at the start of combat, if foe's HP is above or equal to 75%, grants all stats up 4 to unit during combat, and reduces damage from foe's first attack by 20%. Oh, okay. Alright, 20% isn't the craziest number, but she's getting damage reduction... She's getting the Creator Sword, and then she's getting stats on top of that? Like, wow. Man, Ira actually got a really good one there. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I see you, Ira. Alright, let's move on to Ishtar next. So, Mjolnir. Alright, Accelerate Special Trigger. If unit initiates combat or is not adjacent to an ally, grants speed up 6 during combat. And if unit initiates combat... Or if unit is not adjacent to an ally, grants attack and speed up 5 during combat, and neutralizes effects that prevent unit's follow-up attacks. Oh, wow. Oh, man, she's getting 5 attack, 11 speed, minus 1 special trigger, and null follow-up. Or at least half of null follow-up. <laughs> the better half if you're initiating. Yeah, man, th this is going to be a really good one. <laughs> okay, so Ishtar got a nice refine there. Okay, so next up is Leon, and unfortunately, it seems like there's been a typo with Leon's refine here, and it doesn't work the way that it says. So first, I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to tell you what's wrong. So he gets Weapon Triangle Advantage on Colorless, and he also inflicts Weapon Triangle Disadvantage on Colorless. So, so far, it's pretty much the same. And then at the start of combat, if unit's HP is above or equal to half, Inflicts attack and res minus 4 on the foe during combat. And if unit's HP is above or equal to 70%, unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack. Okay, so this is where the problem is. It says unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack, but that's actually not correct. It's just quick repost. So it only works on the enemy phase. You can't play your phase and get a double attack with this guy. So a little unfortunate there, but it is a nice refine for him. Now, as for whether or not Leon is going to be better than Sophia, I'm not really too sure on that, but it is nice to finally get a refine for this guy. Okay, next up we have the Halloween Nowies refine. So, she got Grimoire. 
and unit can move to a space within two spaces of an ally within two spaces. Okay, whoa, that, that's a tongue twister. Hold on. Unit can move to a space within two spaces of an ally within two spaces. Yo, so is that like ranged Wings of Mercy? So she can jump to a... What? Hold on. So she can jump... Let, let's say there's a unit in two spaces of her. She can jump one space in front of them. Like leapfrogging off of them and then... Wow, that's actually a really good jump effect. Okay. <laughs> wow. Alright, and then if unit is within two spaces of an ally, grants attack and speed up four during combat. And also inflicts attack speed and res minus four on foes in three spaces. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, man. She gets a triple rain, basically. She gets Swift Sparrow 2, and then she gets what I would consider the strongest jump effect in the game right now. Letting her jump two spaces. Wow, that that's really good, man. Okay, and I think that's the last... Yeah, that, that is the last refine. All right, so out of these refines, I think, honestly, Noe's is the one that... I would say interests me the most with that jump but in terms of like which one seems the most wow it's got to be ira man imagine getting creator sword with stats and damage reduction <laughs> this is going to be a really good refine for her let me know in the comment section down below which of these refines are you the most hyped for i'm sure a lot of people are going to be hyped for ira but i'm looking at this now and i'm like wow this that's a crazy jump effect right there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the stats for the brand new units. All right, let me see if I get... Yeah, I would say this size is about fine for this. All right, and of course, we got the handy-dandy notebook right here. So we're going to start things off with Marianne. So she's got 36 HP, 41 attack, 32 speed, 17 defense, and 39 res. For a grand total BST of 165. And then she's got super boons in HP, attack, and res. Okay. Look at this girl's res right there. 39 res and 41 attack. So she's pretty similar to what I thought she would be. She's like a Neo version of Guinevere, kind of. Or maybe if, it's safer to probably compare her to Fallen Julia, except she's blue. Because her weapon is a little more similar to that. But 165 BST, I guess it's not a big deal anymore. They started doing dual fours, so it's not like the biggest deal if you don't have enough BST to jump into another bin with the Super Moon anymore. But it still would have been nice to just give her 166, right? Okay, let's move on to Dudu. So this guy's got 50 HP, 45 attack, 17 speed, 45 defense, and 28 res. And Dadu's got super boons in HP and res. Oh, and his BST is 185. Okay. <laughs> wow, I'm surprised he doesn't have a super boon in attack or defense. You would think with a guy like Dadu, he'd probably have a super boon in one of those two. I'm surprised he's got a super boon in res, though. Like, comparing him to how he worked in three houses. Wow. Okay, and then you give him the save skill that he's got, which gives attack and defense. Yeah, Dudu looks like he's going to be a pretty interesting unit for sure. I just wish he had a perf weapon. That's probably the only thing that's going to hold him back. All right, let's go ahead and move on to Ingrid. All right, so Ingrid's got 37 HP, 35 attack, 40 speed, 28 defense, and 27 res for a grand total BST of 167. And then Ingrid's got super boons in HP, speed, and res. So, yeah, just based on the way her weapon works, pretty much going to want to go plus speed on this girl. She gains true damage based on 20% of her speed stat. And then if she has five more speed than the foes, she gets a wind sweep effect. So you're definitely going to want to raise her speed as high as possible. Her attack is pretty solid. Honestly, I was thinking she might have had a little bit less attack, like 32 or something, just based on how crazy her weapon was. But, man, this looks really solid. So, Ingrid is going to be one of the better cavalry units, I think. Alright, so now we move on to the four-star units that pretty much everyone's going to be able to get. 
So Linhart goes first. All right, so he's got 39 HP, 34 attack, 25 speed, 30 defense, and 38 res for a grand total BST of 166. And Linhart has a super boon in speed. All right, <laughs> 25 speed, really? Like, I don't remember this guy's speed being that bad in three houses. So I don't know what they're playing at with the speed, but yo, his defense is... 30 defense and 38 res on a mate or not a mage on a staff unit that's actually pretty good <laughs> like can you imagine i wish he had the super boon in hp though can you imagine like plus hp on this guy you give him infantry pulse and then you give him the grand scratcher he would have been a pretty solid merge project right there and you know i honestly think he still is <laughs> you can give him some pretty crazy skills like palm staff and close foil and that defense is really going to come in handy on this guy. So, honestly, like, he could have been way worse than he is. But I think Linhart actually managed to come out on top despite being a four-star demote with some trash skills. So, that's not too shabby. And then, finally, we have Solon, who is going to be our Grand Hero Battle. So, this guy's got 45 HP. He's got 38 attack. He's got 20 speed. 24 defense and 38 res. And he's got a grand total of 165 for the BST. And then he's got a super boon in defense. Okay. Yeah, another super high attack, super high res red mage. Come on. Like, don't we have enough of those? We already had Veld. We also had, um... What's his face? The guy, Iago. So, do we really need another red grand hero battle with tons of attack and res? But... I guess I shouldn't really judge him on paper yet because I know he has a perf weapon and I haven't even seen what it does yet. So I guess we might as well just go ahead and skip over to what his skills are. Alright, so Solon's got the Banshee, 14 might and 2 range. At the start of turns 3 and 4, inflicts all stats minus 6, gravity, guard, and status preventing counterattacks. On the closest foes within five spaces of unit through their next action. Wow. <laughs> Dude, holy status effects, Batman. He gives... Wow. All stats minus six, gravity and guard, and he inflicts the flash effect. That's pretty crazy. But it's only on turn three and four, man. You know what would have been better? If it was like turn one, he does all stats minus six. Turn 2, he does Gravity. Turn 3, he does Guard. And then turn 4, he does the Flash Effect. I think I would have liked that a little bit more. Just so he's at least doing stuff on the first two turns. Whereas on turn 3 and 4, he just does everything. I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit better, though. Huh. Yeah, th this is really interesting. Honestly, I, I don't want to say it's bad, but it's, it's really hard to say how good this is going to be. Let me know in the comments section down below what you guys think of Banshee and what you guys think of Solon in general, I guess. Yeah, but I just wish he did stuff on turns 1 and 2 as opposed to just 3 and 4. <laughs> but man, he is doing a lot there. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to his skills. So he comes with Glacies. He comes with Sabotage Res at 5 star. Honestly, Sabotage Res, I guess I'll take it. It's better than him getting chill res or freaking chill attack again. So we'll take that. And then he gets attack ploy three at four star. So not too shabby. I mean, sabotage res is pretty solid, I guess. It could definitely be worse. So I'll give it a pass. Okay, now we have the artwork for the new round of the Vault of Heaven. This is what Asgard looks like, basically. <laughs> so... We pretty much left space and we've entered the pearly gates. Pretty dope. I like this background a lot. So once we're in the vault, we're going to be able to <laughs> take a look at this gorgeous background there. And then the final thing that I want to cover in this update is Knot, of course. So Knot is the new OC. And as we can see, she is a freaking savage warrior. Look, look at her, man. She is shredded to high hell. This is a woman that knows how to fight. So I definitely appreciate that. 
some very wonderful artwork here as well. L look at this artwork, dude. This is really good. And then she has a different one for the attack, the special attack art too. Yeah, this is really good. And I like the eagle thing too. I wonder what this eagle thing actually does. Like, is this supposed to be the Pathfinder thing? That's what they're trying to say? All right, well, sure. And then we have her damaged art over here. And then some different facial expressions, so I guess we can skip that. Okay, and then we have her stats and her weapon. All right, so not stats are gonna be 40 HP, 41 attack, 40 speed, 28 red or 28 defense, my bad, and 27 res for a grand total BST of 176. And then she's got super boons in attack, speed, and res. So pretty solid. She is built similarly to Dagger, where she's got a whole lot of attack and speed, and then she's got some really good super boons. So once Knot and Dagger become summonable units, they're going to be some really good units to summon. Definitely very good stuff there. Okay, and then her weapon, Prim Faxi, grants speed up 3. And at the start of combat, if unit's HP is above or equal to 25%, Grants all stats plus 5, and a bonus to all stats during combat, equal to the current bonus on each of unit's stats for one turn. So it's pretty much just bonus doubler, and she's also gaining all stats of 5. And then let's say you combined her with bonus doubler as well, <laughs> like if you had um, legendary Elliewood on the team, or even if you gave her bonus doubler in the A slot, this unit is going to be... Or, this unit is going to have a really high stat ceiling. So, this is pretty nuts. I guess you got to watch out for panic effects. But, yo, her stats are going to be so freaking high with, like, all the bonus doubler stacking she can do. And then she also has Pathfinder, of course, that we've seen already on Dagger. So, it's just a way to allow your allies to move through the space that the unit is on without actually using up one of their movement spaces. So it's a pretty cool skill. And that's going to wrap us up for all the info on this data mine. I know we had a lot to cover there. It's a telltale sign that the night has been crazy where I'm already losing my voice. And we probably have more stuff to come. So I'm definitely going to keep you guys updated if we get any more info. But that's going to wrap us up for this one. I'm once again very impressed by these manuals. Very crazy stuff there. Let me know in the comments section what you guys think of the update. And this is your boy Tacho signing out. So thanks so much for watching the video, guys. And I will catch y'all again on the flip side.